the key to life is just to find out who you are And if you're kinky, that's just how you're meant to be We found a place on the Red Mill Show Where we can all be one perverted family Mel Show on TSRnetwork.com, and we're going to have a great, great show tonight. I'm so excited. This is our launch show. You know, we launched TSR two weeks ago to the to the members of TSR, but today we finally sent out our press releases. We finally are letting people know that we're alive, we're here. We're, I mean, people are joining all over the place. People are starting to blog. People are going to the queue, and they're starting to do, do things in queue. I mean, it's amazing. They're, they're doing photo albums, and our photo albums are password protective, which is really, really, really great. But I'm so, we're in our new studio space. We've been painting all weekend, we've been getting the place in order. We're gonna be building all the construction stuff coming up next next week, or this week, we're going to be putting the stairways up. I can do a grand entrance down the stairways. But, you know, I am so excited about this show. In fact, I've got a couple announcements before I do my guest, because this is my guests are really going to make this show tonight. So we have, we have uh, Shoot for a Cause. You know the two um, firemen that were killed um, during the fires uh, in here in Los Angeles? There's a huge event that's happening on... Oh, it's a silent auction, and if you go to um, TSR Network and go to, um, oh, what was it? Nightshade. Go to Nightshade. Email Nightshade. She will give you all the information. There's going to be a silent auction, which she's bringing in. She brought in 18 photographers that are creating these wonderful, wonderful photographs, and everything that is going to be raised through this fundraiser is going to be given to the families of the two firemen that died. So if, you're, if you've got an opportunity, it's at Gallery um, 1018. It's on Santa Fe Avenue in Los Angeles. Um, it's over 15 photographers, 20 models. Um, the firemen have taken them in. It, they're, they're, they're shot in all the ash and all of the debris, which it's going to be an amazing shoot. So just go in and take... Um, I don't see a date on this. Do you? Oh, it's on Friday, October 16th. So please try to... Go to the thing and support them because it's for the firemen. And then we have um, Wicked in did a blog and it's called One Generation Kids Helping Seniors. And there's a phone number which is 818-678-3188. It is Miss Wicked on TSR Network and it is basically to bring seniors and children together. It's kind of to, you know kind of a healing thing for everybody. So Your dyslexia came in at six eight seven. Ah! <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's Nina Hartley. She's paying attention. Yeah, she's paying attention. So it is 818-687-3188. Because I forewarned them I'm very dyslexic, and I also told them I make lots of mistakes, and I gave them permission to correct me. So now that we've gotten that all over, let's welcome our guests. I'm so excited. Ernest Green and Nina Hartley. Us. Thank you so much for coming. I'm just uh, coming. Oh, doesn't that sound great? I'm just it's like, a little early for that, but okay. <laughs> and we're just this. This is the two hours of the Nina Hartley and Ernest Green show. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back and let them talk because I'm okay. We're gonna get through all right, the tough questions, right? You guys want the tough questions in the in the live audience? You want my tough questions? Yeah, yeah let's yeah. hear it. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're gonna start out with Ernest since they've never really seen my show. So Ernest. Yes. How old were you the the first time you um, fucked a girl? Fifteen. Fifteen. Was she mm -hmm. someone that you were dating? Yes, absolutely. She was a year older than I was, and she picked me. She picked you. Oh yes. And uh, uh, well, there's more, but yeah. go go ahead. No, go ahead. Why did she pick you? Because uh, of some weird biological function, which I call kink dar, which kink, is dar, kink dar, kink dar, which is the equivalent, the kinky equivalent of gay dar, huh? where that enables you to just sort of magically know that somebody is kind of leaning in the direction that you are too, and uh, in our, you know, we got together at a time when there was still a concern. If this is going to date me nicely here, but that's all right. Three years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's been a while since then. But in any event, there was still some kind of nominal value placed on technical virginity in those days, so 
ours was probably the first uh, generation of, uh, I'm going to avoid a religious thing here, but one, one of the first generations of uh, people not not part of specific religions and cultures that are this way, that discovered uh, oral sex and anal sex and every other kind of sex before they discovered conventional sex. Did they not wear patent leather shoes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the same track here. I can say you know what I'm doing. I know, I know not that doing. it's difficult, but in any event, um, the, the, what we discovered uh, that uh, we had a mutual interest in uh, you know, bondage and things of that kind. At 15 years old, you were yeah, in the bondage? I no, she knew, and she was too. Yeah. Yeah, um, idea. with some discussion and some input from her, before the first time we ever had sex, I tied her up with some scarves and uh, spanked her with a belt. And that was the beginning of, of life as we know it. I had that before I had other kinds of sex, and it kind of usually goes in that way. That's the progression. At so, 15? At, well, yeah, I was almost 16. I didn't discover until I was like, am I 40? You know, <laughs> it's just funny. It set the pattern for everything from there on. But that's, but I don't believe that's where it originated. I believe that we both sort of were programmed that way before. We were uh -huh. all, that, we were hardwired to be that way. So each of us sort of detected that signal from the other, because we were very different types of key, of, of young people. I uh -huh. mean, she was a popular cheerleader type of uh -huh. person, and I was a dweeby intellectual kid. It was the you're, opposite of popular. You're a, do, you're a dweeb. Oh, the worst. <laughs> I was thinking, if you looked in the dictionary in those days under dweeb, uh -huh. you would see my picture there right next to the word. So, um, you know, it was considered a very strange choice on her part. Like, why him? 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 Dweebs do grow up to be amazing men, don't they? Uh, they grow yes. up to be amazing dweebs. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> amazing dweebs. It's just, well, you know, in, in, in many ways, uh, the atmosphere was changing. It was mm -hmm. a time of great social ferment. and. What made someone desirable was about to be radically redefined, much to my so advantage. So scarves, we know much, that now. <laughs> much, to my, much to my advantage, that uh -huh. was to be redefined. But uh -huh. up until that point, there was a certain sort of, you know, premium placed on normality. And, you know, this was during the middle 60s, and pretty soon normal was the one thing. That was a terrible insult. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be thought of as normal. Well, good for me, because I already wasn't. So, there you go. So, did you also have oral sex with her? Yeah. Absolutely. We did that first. She sucked your dick? She sure did. Was that the first time you had your dick sucked? Yes, it was. Wow. She was my was first girlfriend. Good? Your very first it wasn't the first, uh, let, me, let me put it to you this way. <laughs> it may have been the first time for me, but it was clearly not the first time for her. Oh, uh, she was a slut. <laughs> well, she, she, I wouldn't exactly say that, but she was a great favorite. She was a cheerleader, and she was a great favorite of some members of the football team uh -huh. before she got with me. So she knew a thing or two. And I learned a thing or two from her. Very, it was a very, you know, valuable first experience, and I have. It was entirely positive. I have nothing bad to say about it. No terrible thing happened as a result. <laughs> Nobody caught us, and there was no big traumatic end of the thing. We just uh, at the end of uh, the second year, uh, you know, we went our separate ways after school, and I assume that she's off somewhere, probably even now, uh, having somebody whap her on the butt with a belt and going from there. But she taught you the ways of the world. <laughs>